next to present at the NWR Resources Conference will be Dart Mining. Uh, Dart is a exploration company focused on gold exploration in northeastern Victoria, with its primary project being the Buckland Gold Project. The, uh, the company has also commenced drilling just recently at the Sandy Creek Project uh, uh, in northeast Victoria. Today presenting will be Dart's Managing Director, James Chernside, and who's been in the commodity and financial markets for over 30 years. Uh, and he's worked from being a geologist assistant but all the way through to the investment banking. Um, James, welcome, and we look forward to hearing the uh, an update on, on DART. Thanks very much, Mark. Good morning, everybody. Um, DART Mining, as Mark mentioned, is primarily focused uh, geographically in the northeast of Victoria. Uh, it's the mountainous region of Victoria, for those that don't know. Um, the business or the company's been around uh, since 2003. Um, in 2007, the company listed on the ASX. Our stock code's DTM. Uh, forward looking statements and caution. No doubt people are familiar with those. Um, quick corporate directory. We've got around, call it 100 million shares on issue. Uh, there's around 34 million uh, options on issue. Some are deep in the money. Uh, more recently at a rights issue, which we concluded in October, um, we issued another 25 million. So the bulk of those are about 20 cents per, uh, sorry, 30 cents strike. Market cap at around 19 cents, but about 19 million. Uh, my board, fellow board members, uh, Dr. Dennis Clark, he's an independent. Um, Dennis has been involved in, he's a geologist, uh, he's been involved in uh, numerous large um, development, uh, mining development uh, projects over his, during his career. Uh, fellow director Luke Robinson, uh, financial market oriented person. Management wise, we have a head of exploration, Steve Groves, who's ex Newmont, um, ex BHP. Um, very good. We hired Steve back in March. He's made a real impression uh, on our operations to date. Uh, ben Hines, who's actually a geochemist and uh, head of field operations. Uh, Dean Turnbull, an original founder of DART. And Dean does quite a lot of work with us. He doesn't work with us full time, but uh, does a lot of work with us. A uh, quick summary of 2020, it's been a very interesting year, as we all no doubt realise. Um, from the COVID lows back in March, where I think a lot of companies like ours wondered whether there really was a future, uh, we've seen a sharp price uh, recovery. Uh, that's been combined with a very sharp rise in precious metals, uh, also base metals and particularly copper. Um, as a result mainly of supply issues uh, out of South America, uh, but also uh, probably better than expected demand out of China during this past six months or so. As I mentioned, we completed a rights issue in October. Uh, we raised a total of $5 million. Um, we had about a 50% take up through subscribers or existing shareholders. Uh, we then placed around two and a half million with institutional and private investors uh, 708 qualified. Um, in September this year, early September, in fact, the end of August, we uh, began a series of uh, drilling programs. Um, and we've to date uh, drilled around 4000 metres on different projects. And I'll get to those uh, through the present uh, through the presentation. Um, essentially, the projects involved there are uh, our Buckland Creek, uh, Buck Buckland Gold project. Uh, Sandy Creek, uh, Granite Flat, sometimes known as Empress, and Rushworth, which is at, out in central Victoria, about 60 kilometres uh, to the west of Violet Town, so northern central Victoria, out in the plains, as we say. Um, we recently uh, applied for a, a further grant of uh, ground out in East Gippsland. Uh, the prospectivity there is very much focused in base metals. Um, and we'll come to that. We haven't done a lot of work on those. They haven't been uh, granted as yet, but we'd expect that over the next 12 months or so, six to 12 months. Um, from our Buckland Gold project, we've released um, some results 
um, about eight weeks ago. Um, we had some very good hits there. Um, I'll get to those in a moment. Um, one issue uh, for our entire industry at the moment is delays in getting assay results back from the laboratories. Um, we were, we're, we're looking at sort of six to eight week type delays on, uh, from submitting samples to getting results back at the moment. Uh, that's been further compounded by this recent shutdown in, in Adelaide. Uh, a lot of our stuff's been getting processed over there. Um, DART operates, we've continued to operate all year uh, in the field. Uh, we operate on a, with a COVID safe plan um, with restricted access to work sites. Uh, and we also run a, an isolated container camp, which has been quite good because it doesn't impose on local communities and we can pick it up and move it to wherever we need to be. And hopefully that's close to site as opposed to 40 or 50 kilometres away and involving uh, commuting there and back. So DART's main uh, focus uh, is in uh, historic gold fields uh, in, in the northeast of Victoria. It's a fairly overlooked part of uh, Victoria's rich gold history. Um, a lot of the ground up here has not had any kind of contemporary um, um, techniques, uh, exploration techniques. Uh, applied. Um, a lot of the mines in Victoria, as most of you would know, um, apart from those around Ballarat and Bendigo, uh, were kind of abandoned in the 1920s, pretty much. Um, the interesting point to note on the old timers, the early miners, uh, was that as a result of um, uh, as a result of the cost of extraction as a result of the remoteness at that time, um, they were really only interested in super high grade gold, i.e. about an ounce a tonne or better. Uh, they were prepared to, to rat out, um, but we, we not only suspect, but we know that there's been an awful lot of gold left in those historic mines uh, at very, very good grades. Um, so why Victoria? I think a lot of people watching this this morning would understand uh, why, but uh, not least because of the tremendous success of Kirkland Lakes Fosterville Mine. Um, the Store Gold Mine as well has, has had a renaissance and they're, they're, in, uh, they're ramping up production over at Stall at the moment, it's going very well. Um, and, and because of that, we've seen a significant interest by international mining companies. Uh, Newmont is an example where uh, they've fairly recently pegged some ground out at Rushworth, which is one of our projects uh, just next door to us. Um, they have never pegged ground in Victoria before. So there is a genuine uh, full on um, interest in Victoria as, as a place that has not been explored uh, in recent decades and therefore offers um, uh, very good prospectivity, particularly when you consider that around all about 3% of all of the world's gold produced has come out of the state of Victoria. Um, obviously, the gold price in US dollars and A dollars has um, uh, captured people's attention. Uh, it's performed very well over the last couple of years, last three years, and uh, particularly in Australian dollars, where we've got it trading at about 25.50 per ounce. Uh, so that de-risks a lot of projects. Um, it makes it very attractive from a, a margin point of view. And those in the production game at the moment are making hay while the sun shines. Um, just in summary, DART's got around 6,000 square kilometres of uh, exploration ground in the northeast and, and in central Victoria. Um, we are uh, searching principally for, for gold and copper. Uh, but amongst other metals, you've got uh, big silver hits, uh, molybdenum, which sometimes DART is associated with for its unicorn project that was uh, created in, uh, sorry, discovered, I should say, in 2008. Uh, and there's the Stockman uh, high-grade zinc mine up at Benambra. Um, DART also discovered in 2016 um, some, uh, a very large number of uh, LCT uh, pegmatites containing pretty reasonable grades uh, of lithium, 
amongst other things, high grades on tantalum and some rare earths, including niobium and cesium. Um, so re regional setting, um, and just to uh, round out darts footprint and, and portfolio, if you like, we, we've got our foot on nine historic gold fields. Um, we have so far unearthed at surface uh, around seven uh, uh, porphyry projects um, containing gold, silver, copper, moly and zinc. Um, and as mentioned, we have around about 3,000 uh, LCT pegmatite dikes uh, up in the northeast, mainly down a corridor around 15 kilometres by 60 uh, in the Mitta Mitta Valley, uh, running between uh, a township called Estale all the way down to, uh, in the south, uh, Glen Wills, which is not far from Omeo. Uh, BHP uh, actually sampled a lot of those, well, quite a number anyway, of dikes of pegmatites back in the 1980s. Uh, they were particularly searching for tin and tantalum. Unfortunately, they didn't uh, assay for lithium at the time, but uh, some of the tin and tantalum hits they got in those days were very significant. So our current list of projects, uh, you can see on that screen there, well, I won't run through all of them, but um, you can see to the right on that map, um, Dart's footprint, uh, the bottom right hand corner with the yellow are uh, uh, expiration license applications. So all those in yellow are under application. Um, and then a bit further up to the, towards the top of the illustration, you've got the Koryong area, and we've got some significant ground pegged around there. Uh, just to the left of that is the Mitamita Valley uh, from Talandun, which is well, about 60 kilometres to the southeast of Wodonga, um, and that extends all the way down um, to Glen Wills in the south. Um, to the left of that is our Buckland Gold footprint, um, and I'll come to the Buckland Gold project shortly. In fact, right now, um, from a regional setting, it's important and not many people do understand that the Ruther Glen, Chilton, Beechworth, Bright, Harrietville goldfields, which is one large aggregation of goldfields, uh, has historically produced around seven million ounces. And you can see it circled there in the centre of that map. And that is essentially the areas that we're prospecting in at the moment um, for gold mineralisation. Um, it's, uh, it, it, it all lies on the eastern edge of the Tabarabara zone, a geological zone identified by GeoVic um, in, in Victoria. Uh, it is renowned for uh, gold fertility. Um, and they, uh, GeoVic also interpret it to be an extension of the uh, world class, as we all know, uh, in Dow Benigo zone. So Buckland is at the southern end of that, um, of that corridor, if you like. Um, thus far, we've identified around 17 and a half kilometres of uh, stacked shear zone, uh, hosting both high grade and uh, in quartz, uh, as well as disseminated gold, and I'll get more specific about that in a minute. Um, so that's that, we'll move to the next one. So here's the, the Buckland Gold project itself. That, uh, that image you can see there on the right um, gives you an idea of the seven and a half kilometres of strike. Um, well, in fact, you can see the line there. It shows you where we've been working. Um, I think we've taken a total of 7,000 uh, surface samples and uh, for geochemistry. Uh, we're seeing a very strong association with arsenic in the gold results. And it's all remains open actually to the south as well. In other words, we haven't got to the end of it. Uh, we hope to do that over the next six months or so. So it's enormously, it's very big, big area. Uh, it's tough country in terms of terrain. However, the terrain does lend itself favourably to exploration, particularly drilling where you've got 
a uh, relief from the top of the ridges down to the bottom of the valleys of three, 400 metres. So you can stick a drill in at the bottom of the valley and you're getting um, considerably deeper than you would probably from the top of the ridges. Um, as I mentioned, uh, multiple uh, parallel north, northwesterly uh, oriented stacked structures, um, thick mineralisation. Uh, we know from some deep drilling that we did there in 2008 and also 2014 that there is thick mineralisation uh, well below surface. So to give, you know, that, that gives us a great deal of confidence that ultimately we might well get something significant out of this. Um, the style of the deposit or of, of the mineralization up at um, Buckland, um, I've mentioned it's shear hosted, it's, or, it's an orogenic gold system, um, strong associations with arsenic and gold. Um, there are very distinct similarities in the uh, mineralization uh, with Bendigo and Fosterville. And I know a lot of people talk to that, uh, but there's absolutely uh, very uh, obvious evidence of that when we look at ours and, and we see what they're mining over there at Fosterville. Um, the surface is outcropping generally with uh, high grade um, quartz hosted um, gold. And then we have these broad zones um, running across the ridges uh, of disseminated sulphide hosted um, and fairly low, low to mid grade gold, um, but nevertheless, huge tons. And that's what's really exciting. Uh, that gives you a closer idea of the sort of mineralization. We refer to it as the mineralization type A and B. So you've got the high grade core veins as a type A mineralization and, and the sediment, the sheared sediments or the uh, disseminated gold as a type B. Um, rock chip and grabs, uh, grab samples that we've taken uh, down there. You can see those on the left uh, from some trenching and uh, random uh, grab samples. Um, they're very, very good, very high grade, but that's what we expect uh, on some of these high grade areas that we've identified that historically have also been mined. So this is a, um, a, a long section, this illustration. This shows you the larger pink or magenta squares are uh, from the recent drilling program. Um, they're the pierce points uh, of a RAP program that we just completed. I think there was around 1200 odd meters, 18 odd holes, fairly shallow, but we're just trying to uh, work out, and this is within what we call the Fairleys Prospect. The Fairleys Prospect is a postage stamp area, size area, uh, within the context of the entire Buckland Gold Project. But because we had drilling uh, results from that from earlier programs, we have sought to extend that out and understand just how wide it's going. Uh, on this particular program, we've managed to extend the strike on you know, the, the micro strike, if you like, by about 260 odd metres. So we're very happy with the, um, uh, with the program that we've just completed. It adds an enormous amount of understanding and knowledge to historic programs that have been conducted there. Um, some of the significant intervals um, you can see there on the left, um, you know, 38 metres at uh, nearly five grams and 11 at two and a half and 10, etc. So that's extremely encouraging from our perspective. Um, I'll move straight on. I know we're limited for time to another project, which we've just, uh, we're working towards concluding a first phase program on. This is called, this is Granite Flat. We released a primer on this project a couple of weeks ago. Uh, the primers that we released are designed to orientate investors and other interested parties in, um, in exactly what the project is and its history and that sort of thing. Um, so it's located around 75 k's to southeast of Aubrey in the Mitter Valley, uh, probably just south of Mitter Mitter for those that know that township. Um, it's an unusual um, uh, project. It is, um, there's evidence of load style gold there. 
um, which we suspect may well be a, a source of um, a lot of the alluvial gold that was taken out of the Mittermitter River historically. Um, but over that, we've, or over printed on, on the lodestyle gold, we have what appears to be porphyry mineralization. And certainly some of the hits that we've had on copper, uh, particularly, are very interesting. Um, Perseverance and CRA, otherwise known as uh, Rio Tinto nowadays, uh, did some drilling back in the mid 80s, early 90s. Uh, so we had a lot of data. We, when we received that data, it was all in analog. So we had to uh, process that, digitize it, get it into our models and develop it up and um, ensure for accuracy with um, some work on the ground. Uh, but there were yeah, 71 shallow RC and diamond drill holes. Um, big intersections of, uh, of gold, silver, um, bismuth, uh, copper, lead and zinc. Um, and it's of this project, probably alongside the Buckland project, is possibly the most exciting uh, properties, two properties that we're sitting on at the moment. There's a lot more work to do here, but we're seeing uh, mineralization at depth um, at surface and uh, uh, and along significant strike so you can see um, the red diagram to the left there um, the the hot spots are actually in green it's slightly in reverse to what you might be used to seeing but um, we've done a lot of sampling there we've done we will by the end of this month uh, that is in 10 days or thereabouts we will have completed I think around two and a half thousand meters, uh, mostly shallow holes down to maximum 50 meters, uh, just to test and under, try to get some data uh, that we can sit down and, and interpret and uh, decide on the next step. But we'll be revisiting Granite Flat very early in the new year, uh, probably with some RC drilling. Um, so that's, that's Granite Flat. Um, the second project that we drilled recently, um, which was after the Buckland project, uh, is Sandy Creek. And <clears throat> again, we put out a, um, a primer on Sandy Creek um, just to give historic context and um, to give people a sense of what potential we have there. I think from the drilling that we've done recently, um, the thing that the, the most important thing that we've learned is that it is not only high grade there is also um, very distinct evidence of halo gold and also mineralization into granite and that makes it slightly unusual uh, but historically it's just been recognized as a very high grade uh, narrow vein gold project um, but what we're seeing with with halo of disseminated uh, gold means that this thing has stepped up in our in our rankings as something that we need to do more work on as well. And, and that amongst, uh, well, alongside of um, uh, Buckland and, and uh, Empress or Granite Flat, we'll be working on that pretty hard next year. So that's just more, I'm just conscious of time again. Um, I'm just, uh, that gives you more ideas of some of the work that we've done at Sandy Creek. Um, these, uh, these are old historic mines that we've got listed here. Um, and you can go back and have a look at those if you choose to a bit later on. But there was some extraordinarily uh, super high grade hits from narrow veins uh, up to three and a half thousand grams, three and a half kilos per tonne uh, from records, uh, historic records that we got. So that's Sandy Creek. Uh, Rushworth is a project which we are drilling literally right now. That's located out on the plains in uh, central northern Victoria, 45 k's northeast of uh, Fosterville. It's a different style of geology, um, and and we're we're trying we're testing, trying to understand a bit more about the faults and uh, their orientation. But historically, again, there's been high grade gold taken out of this. I think from our perspective, it's interesting that we are surrounded uh, with Chalice to the north and Newmont to the west. Uh, we've got Nagambi stroke Mawson um, out to the east and to our south. Uh, but it is actually our Rushworth footprint amongst all of those 
that are uh, uh, exploring in that area has to be amongst one of the most prospective and most interesting bits of ground. So the other thing that DART has within its portfolio, and I won't be a second mark, is porphyries. I mentioned that early on in the piece. Porphyries really lend themselves to joint venture arrangements. The, we've done surface work. Um, we may next year put a couple of uh, deep, uh, deep diamond holes into one or two of these to try and understand a little bit more about them. And uh, anyway, sorry, I think I'm getting a wind up here. But thanks very much, everyone, for your attention. Uh, Dart's got money in the bank. We've got two rigs turning at the moment. Uh, we're waiting on probably two and a half thousand assay samples back from the lab as a result of the delays and they will be coming to the market over the next couple of months. And uh, there's our tenement status, status table there at the back. You can see a lot of those are in application. We're confident of getting about four or five of those in application actually granted by the end of this year. Uh, Mark, back to you. Thank you very much. Sorry if I went over time. <laughs> That's all right, James. Uh, thanks very much for the update on DART. With the time, um, we won't have time for any for questions today, but uh, as James said, the, uh, the data is there on the website. Um, and thank you very much for the update. That's a pleasure. Thanks very much to everyone uh, who took the time to have a look.